Hello, my name is Sandra Schuh and I'm a resident at the Department of Dermatology at the General Hospital in Augsburg. Basal cell carcinoma is the most common cancer and the commonest cutaneous malignancy in Caucasians. Its pathogenesis is correlated with chronic UV exposure and age. The incidence of new cases of BCCs is increasing. Also, it is a slow-growing neoplasia. BCCs can cause significant morbidity due to the destructive local spread and the risk of recurrence if treatment is not properly conducted. Also, surgical excision is the main treatment modality for basal cell carcinomas. Recurrences because of positive surgical margins are not uncommon, mainly for infiltrative, micronodular and basal squamous carcinoma subtypes. Besides the histologic subtype, BCCs, which are located centrifacially and periorificially, known also as the age zone, have a higher incidence of recurrence. The aim of a correct treatment of BCCs relies on its complete excision with a maximum preservation of the functional capacity of the area surgically treated, along with a cosmetic acceptance. Most micrographic surgery is applied in tumors with a high risk of relapse, recurrent BCCs and or located in specific sites. This surgical technique is based on a minimum of two different steps. The first one consists of an excision and intraoperative microscopic confirmation of the complete margins by rapid pathology. After this procedure, patients pass through other interventions, which can consist of one more surgery, meaning the closure of the defect if margins were diagnosed as free of tumor cells, or of repeated stages of further excision until no tumor cell is detected along the margin and then the patient can finally undergo the last surgical procedure. MMS is efficient and responsible for the highest cure rate of skin cancers and is the preferred therapeutic management for BCCs at high risk for recurrence. But there are some obstacles. High knowledge skills of practitioners are required but there are also financial and resource-related problems. Besides, MMS is not free of complications and the patient's clinical condition may be a contraindication to the realization of this technique. According to the clinical features, PCCs are mainly classified as nodular, superficial and morpheiform. Here I showed some examples which I have to ex exclude. How confident are we of a complete removal of BCC during simple surgical excision without removing unnecessary healthy skin? Well, some studies have proved the capacity of OCT to diagnose BCC as well as to identify the subtype and estimate the depth of the neoplasia. So, can OCT help on increasing the rates of complete BCC excision, meaning free surgical margins with one-step surgery only, and at the same time avoid the removal of unnecessary healthy skin. Yes, we think so. Therefore, we sought for a method for margin delineation using a permanent marker like this one and then evaluation with OCT to delimit the margins of BCC prior to the excision where MMS technique would be classically applied. All lesions were macroscopically photographed with the photo camera Sony CyberShot and for dermoscopic evaluations, we use the polarized light dermoscope Dermlight HR. The viewside OCT equipment from Microsoft Diagnostics was used to map the BCCs. This machine carries a color video camera inside the OCT probe that guides us and allows us to know the exact part of the lesion that is evaluated. For each measurement, we first did a multi slice area of 6.6 .6 square millimeters, but we now think that the free run mode is much faster for margin mapping. The first demoscopic, macroscopic demarcation of the contour of the lesions was based on the assessment with the naked eye, guided by the demoscopic evaluation of every single lesion. On top of the visible and demoscopic margin of the tumor, a safety distance of 2 mm was added using the silver ink pen. The first scan with OCT was performed in the center of the lesion. This was done for diagnostic proof as well for, as for the evaluation of the structural appearance of the tumor, for, examples, for example nodules or cysts. 
Moreover, this central scan made it possible to estimate the tumor sickness by measuring the distance from the epidermis until the inferior edge where features from BCC could be recognized in the transversal sections of OCT. In the next steps, OCT scans in a minimum of four different positions were carried out to measure all the margins at 12 o'clock, at 3 o'clock, at 6 o'clock and at 9 o'clock with a slight overlap of the 6.6 square millimeter area of the multi-slice scan. The flexible handpiece of the device was positioned in a way that the border demarcated with the pen was always located in the center of the probe, being visible during the whole acquisition of the images as a guide for the mapping, so that we could exactly know which areas were measured at the moment. Thus, the scanning direction was perpendicular to the border, so that the laser could scan from the area which was demoscopically compromised by the BCC across the pen mark to the macroscopically healthy skin. In this way, it was guaranteed that the scan covered the tumor, the demoscopically defined margin and the area outside the border. The margin drawn with the pen appears as a hyperreflective linear structure separating the area inside from the area outside of the demarcation and serves as a visual guide in the OCT image for maybe redefining the border. Here we see that there are still some BCC residuals outside the margin and therefore the margin needs to be corrected. If during the OCT scanning any of these features were seen outside the margin, an extension of the margin of the lesion was done, maintaining this, the distance of 2 to 3 mm from the previous one, like we did here. Keeping this distance of 2 to 3 mm, we followed the same length recommended by MMS technique when it is necessary to enlarge the margins. We see here no BCC residual outside the margin, and histology confirmed this. Outside, no BCC residual was left, so we did the margin mapping right. Most of the times, the transversal sections of OCT were used for mapping, but sometimes the unfast view helped us in doubtful cases as well. The final demarcation of the BCC borders was concluded when no suspicious area for basic carcinoma was visible outside the marked margin in the OCT image. At this moment, the patient was ready to undergo surgery in the following 24 hours. After the lesions were mapped, the surgeons chose the outermost marked margin for the excision of the lesion. The excised tissue was marked with different colors for orientation and went to the histology lab. There, the central part of the lesion, as well as the bottom, the first margin defined by dermoscopy, all the extra margins and the outermost borders of the lesions, that had been defined by OCT prior to MMS were evaluated separately using the tubinger torte technique. You see, it is a practical method by which the lateral margin of BCCs can be marked and defined through OCT evaluations in a near to histologic evaluation of the tissue before surgical procedures. However, imaging limitations may be bleeding tumors, crusts, infiltrative BCCs with very tiny tumor strands, and lesions positioned in difficult to access areas, for example, nasal wings. If this new method proves to statistically reduce the number of surgical stages and also reduce the average size of surgical defects, the pre-surgical margin definition of BCCs may enable an improvement of the most micrographic surgery technique, which we may term OCT-assisted MMS, which is more time and resource efficient and may enable extension of the benefits of MMS to even more patients. And last, I want to thank Natalie de Cavallo, who is not here with us today, but she provided me most of the images. So thank you very much. And thank you very much for your attention.